And we're recording, and now we go live out on Zoom, and let's see what happens here. Yes, we are live on Facebook. Hello, everybody on Facebook. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me see here. Let's cross this one off your list. Do you want to know? And uh, remind me tomorrow. It always, you know, what I hate about uh, about uh, uh, this about uh, Windows is it keeps asking me if I want to do something, and I don't want to do something. Okay. Anyway, uh, you know, I, I hate it when they want to force you to upgrade or to do whatever needs to be done. And in the case of Windows, they really force you. Apple is moderately annoying. Okay. Uh, they just simply suggest, hey, it's time to do this. We'll let you know tomorrow if you don't want it. All right. Hmm. Anyway, have a little sip of coffee there, a little sip of, of, of the, the coffee thing. And oh, hey, we got a whole bunch of people. Let's get them all in here. Admit all. Yeah, we're admitting. Oh, wow. Uh, there's uh, Shecky. And hello, Shecky. Hello, Ben. Yeah, hello there to Steve Bender. Hello, Steve. Sorry about last week. It's okay. It's, you know, sometimes I'm so involved in the show, I don't see that somebody's trying to get in. And that's yeah, that's a, you have to sacrifice for your art. I am. Yes. <laughs> and Andrew is uh, coming in here. And uh, Edward Berger. That's right. It's yeah. Uh and uh your voice isn't as horrible today as it usually is. Do you have a cold? <laughs> I don't think so. It's just, oh, just I, my usual voice. I think. How do, how does your voice get when you have a cold? I don't know. I have to check. Oh, okay. Hey. Sure. I have to check. Yeah. And uh, Scott Boddicker. Hello, Scott. Hey, how are you? Out there in Plano, Texas. Uh, the lovely, lovely Paul Eleven. My if if I wasn't married to Marjorie, I'd be coming on to her. Oh, uh, <laughs> and uh well and, and Charlie Wallace. And we'll hear hear from Marjorie soon. In fact, here she is, because she's been tr battling with uh Facebook. You, you know, you remember the old days, not Facebook, but with Amazon. Remember the old days with Amazon? You got a hold of them. They took care of it for you. And if you didn't get it yet, they said, well, we'll send you another one. If you get the other one, please don't send it back. Ba, ba, ba. Now it's like, hello, you have called customer support. <laughs> and uh, Marjorie was on the phone with them saying, we have to make sure this is you. Well, I, I'm sorry. You've got the uh, the number of the order and all of that. It's got to be you. Yeah. And you're also talking to India. You know, yeah, well, exactly. That's the other problem. Yeah. How come everybody in India is named Bill? Yeah. <laughs> I, absolutely. I, I thought their name was Must Reboot. <laughs> yeah. And, they, 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 and I didn't get a package either. She was getting, uh, you know, we, ne we never had one of these, uh, uh, what do you call it? These, uh, 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 what, do you, uh, hand vacuums. You know, how many here have a fan vacuum at home? How many of you have those? Uh, really? Only did. two. Wow. Like a, a dust buster kind of thing? Dust buster, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I always had one because they were great, you know, especially for vacuuming the bed. <laughs> I like to eat crackers in bed, so it was very good for that. And crackers <laughs> likes it. Crackers <laughs> finds it very, uh, very, uh, very uh, enlightening. And you also said your cleaning woman is not going to be back for like three months. Oh, well, she isn't going to be back. For about she's coming two, back in September. In September. Oh, okay. And in the meantime, we're we're cleaning the place ourselves. Wow. Maybe maybe next time, don't order your vacuum from Adam and Eve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so we're 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 we we've been uh, we're we're we got a, a little problem with them here. You know, all I say. Yeah, I'm... but Amazon should just take care of it. I don't even know why you would have Marjorie would have a problem dealing with them. Well, it's it's like you used to. You know, when you didn't get something, you'd call them and they'd take care of it, right? They give now, you five bucks or you, whatever. Now they go to go through all kinds of hell trying to get them to uh, to agree. You know, with what needs to be done, and. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get the package. It says you got. I got. I was supposed to get the it package. It was delivered to a safe place. Uh, yeah, it's delivered to a safe place. Like I'm, I was looking under a rock in the. Uh, in the... <laughs> well, did it say it was delivered to the apartment building or? No, it said it was delivered to a safe place. 
Well, what's the safe place? <laughs> the safe place? They left it at the bank. Yeah. <laughs> Go pick it up, hey, man. Go pick hey, it hey, up at hey, Fort Knox. What were you saying, Steve? I was going to say, go pick it up at Fort Knox or something. Yeah, right. It's been left in a safe place. Where? Up your ass? You know, <laughs> well, come on. You, 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 mis you misunderstood. It's a safe space. It's, it's around a whole bunch of Gen Zs and millennials who got offended by a comedian. Oh, I see. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. yeah. It's true. But what I like is when they say they deliver the package and they show a picture of the package and it's not your house. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had that. So okay, that I'm good on that. They did send me another package though. They did send me another. Well, in, my, in our case, it's usually we have four lobbies in this building off the courtyard, right? And sometimes they just get lazy and deliver it to the first building. Well, that mm. is the building it says on our uh, on the address, okay? Uh, uh, 8I, our apartment come on up and rob us sometime uh, <laughs> is uh, is just you know it's it's simple it's uh it is a no-brainer well you have to have a brain i guess well you it know. also says building three building three right so um but it sometimes goes to one so now i got to go around looking in each of the buildings to see if they put it there before i then complain and they just leave it in the lobby a safe then, place. Then they, yeah, they leave it. That's a safe place. They leave it in the lobby. Oh my God. Yeah. We have no concierge. We don't have now, a, a now they're supposed to is some front of, desk. Some of the Amazon people, no matter how small the package, will deliver it to our doorstep. Oh wow. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, wait, let, me finish, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish, Marjorie. <laughs> Except when it weighs like 50 pounds, then they leave it downstairs. Yeah. You know, I'm going, well, what is with this? You know, I mean, one day they left, uh, well, I don't know, a 25 pound package of, uh, of soda. Uh, down to, oh, sorry, Vernon. No, cancel, cancel. I don't want to remove you. I want to admit you. That's just me. I'm losing my mind. Um, Your doors aren't locked or anything. Anybody can come in and go to any apartment. No, they have, I think they have a way of getting in. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. All right. They do ring up, you know. Okay. So um, that that's that's another thing. They can ring up and we'll let them in. But the point is, they leave the heavy packages down there. But a little light package that you know, <laughs> if you flew, threw it out the window, would like float. You know, <laughs> that, that one they leave at the at the door. Okay. So I mean, Marjorie had like two cases of what Pellegrino Pellegrino seltzer. And uh, they left them downstairs. Oh. You know how heavy each one of those are. No, you know, and we're old people. We use that. Yeah, but it's a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They left in a safe space, a place that won't molest seltzer. Right. Yeah, but anyway, it so, never ends. It never ends. It goes on and on and on. How you doing, Steve Bender? I've been better, thanks. But I'm okay. been, been I'm okay. Things have not been going well. And then, you know, yesterday I jumped into a pool with my phone in my pocket. Oh! Oh! So, but, so, that, so but, that's great. But wait a minute. The phone's okay, right? No, the phone's fried. Really? How yeah. old is the phone? It's two years old. I, it's sitting in a bowl of rice, but that's not going to do anything. I, I, jumped, I jumped in with mine about two weeks ago and it was perfectly fine. I really? Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be waterproof. What, 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 what kind of phone do you have? That's a Samsung. It's not an iPhone. Oh, okay. <laughs> iPhones are waterproof, I believe. Yeah. Resistant. Yeah. Water resistant. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's bad. And then I was depressed, so I went to the movies. I thought I'd enjoy this movie, Nope, and I did not enjoy it. Oh, oh I could have told you ahead of time on that one. And I haven't even read the reviews. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to get out a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but I did not like this one. Where's that sound coming from? Oh, it's coming from Andrew. Mike. Yeah, it's coming from Andrew. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I just, you know, uh, I could have told you that nope was nope. Did you say it you thought? No, oh, no. I just, the thing is, it's done by, uh, what's his name? Gordon uh, Peele. Jordan Peele. Jordan uh, Peele. And he really only did one good movie. Okay? One good movie. And ever since then, it's always 
Jordan Peele's blah blah blah. Yeah. Or Jordan Peele film. Yeah. Well, this and is all, this is only his third movie. He only did Get Out and Us. And well, then. you only you only really get that ability after you've done about twenty hit movies like Alfred Hitchcock, and finally you want to put your name on it because it's a brand. Yeah. Jordan mm -hmm. Peele is not a brand. Nobody really gives a crap about. It. I I won't go to a Jordan Peele film because everything else he's done, the TV show, The Twilight Zone. Uh, he did a couple of other things uh, uh, on TV, and then he did some films. And they were and outside of that first film, nothing was any good. So uh, the word name Jordan Peele on a film says, "Don't go." <laughs> but what about Keenan Peele? Got out. You, you, it was your desire to just get the hell out. Yeah, right? I just wanted to get out, and you know, it was, it was playing in the middle of the Yeah. You know, had was this before or after your uh, your your phone fell in where the pool fell in the pool yeah yeah what do you go swimming i go swimming every morning yes well not anymore uh, <laughs> so it, it, you're supposed to put it in rice and that's supposed to do the deal yeah it's, it's in rice now it's not good doing anything it's not gonna help well you don't know you don't know just leave it in the rice for a while yeah. it should be waterproof i mean I, my samsung is fine i had a I had a 10, I have a 22 now, but a 10, they all, I've both gone in the pool with all of them. <laughs> well, this watch, you can go in the in the water. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if something was just unsealed or something. Yeah, who knows? Had it been yeah. open and repaired. Right. No. Right. No. no. I'll get a new phone this week, but yeah. 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 It's a pain in the ass and it's expensive. Yeah, it's, two years <laughs> it's two years. Time for another one. Yeah. Sure. Right. Um, uh, th th is, th do you have a warranty on it? No, oh, no. no forget. It's not important. Let's talk about something more. <laughs> I, I take, no, I take out insurance on my. Uh, because I take. I, I don't take out insurance on any of my computers when I buy them or buy the protection plan. You know, because there's, there's a year, for instance, on most of the stuff you buy, because that's not, it's pretty hard to have stuff go wrong after a while on those things. But with the watch, right, and the phone, yeah, you know, that can, things can happen, you know, so. Because you're out with them, of course. Yeah. You're yeah, you're using them a lot. Can I get back to Jordan Peele for a second? Yeah. What about the stuff he did with Keegan-Michael Key? Did you like that stuff? Yeah, but that's that a different deal. Good. That's a different that deal. That's not, that's not a movie he's trying to sell me. Oh, I'm not saying it is. I'm just asking if... Uh, if, if that that, that stuff, stuff was great. It yeah, was that great. stuff was amazing. That was yeah, really was funny great. stuff. Really funny yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and, so it's kind of like a Medina... It's kind of like a Medina thing. Like a what? Isn't that her name, Medina? Medina's whatever, Medina's family. Um, Tyler Perry. Perry. With with Tyler Perry, yeah, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but like yeah. I was wondering if I, I was wondering. I've always wondered if Jordan Peele is trying to follow the Tyler Perry model of how he's building his career and his business. I've always wondered about. No, I, th I think Jordan Peele considers himself a much more serious artist. Well, no, well, no, I'm, like I'm not saying it's M. Night thing. Shyamalan. It's an M. Night Shyamalan. That's another example. Who gives a good goddamn? He made a great right. movie, and after that, it was an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Right. Well, that's, this right. movie that's what I'm talking about. Not the same subject, but just the idea that he's trying to build himself a brand that way. That's where I'm going with it. Well, if you're going to build a brand, do Shyamalan. something worthy of it. You know? That's my point. But... Yeah, I guess maybe I'm fascinated by the near post. I don't know. I just, I guess it's just that I hate black people. Meanwhile, who who wrote who wrote the um the anger management skit with with uh, Obama? That, that oh, I, who knows yeah. which one of them wrote it? But it was Key that did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, was amazing. It was great. It was great. Y yeah, yeah. It, a guy who could exude Obama's inner <laughs> inner anger. Very funny. Was very funny. Luther, his alter ego. That was yeah. it, Luther. Luther. Uh, and he did it at the uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it? the correspondence, correspondence dinner. Uh, 
and uh, mm-hmm. but anyway so you know i was uh um uh, but anyway this whole thing with with amazon uh, you know, i mean the, the days are gone when you call them up and it's a pleasant experience oh no you call them up and they again they would be like we'll send you a new one tomorrow and we'll give you five bucks yeah and by yeah. the way they said we'll send you a new one tomorrow and if the other one comes don't worry about sending it back yeah mm-hmm. yeah so I learning that I had two of just about everything I ordered from them. <laughs> they don't do that anymore. Now they want to send me, they want to give me five dollars credit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the worst part was this she wanted to to identify that it was me. So she wouldn't tell me my email address. She wouldn't tell me the order number. She mm. wouldn't tell me my telephone. But she sent me a link, which I never got. No, they sent you a link, and I saw it. And what it was, it was a broken link. Right, but then there's she a link sent on a it, second. and it's got one of those little hazard signs. Yeah. Where, where she was supposed to click on the link and approve. Yeah, but again, you don't know if it's a real link. You know, yeah. for all you know, Marjorie is talking to you know a scam artist. You could. Did you sure you are actually talking to Amazon? Did you tell them to send? That you I don't know, said them a confirmation number to a robot. It was 20 minutes talking to a robot, so I re- finally got to a real person. Yeah. And she was in India. Of course. Yeah. Right. But you don't know if you're talking to a scam artist. You know, yeah. let's be honest. You know. She well, says, Oh, I can't tell you your name because <laughs> it's not confidential. Hmm. But can I have a credit card number and your social number and your whatever? No, she, he, yeah. she didn't ask for any of that. No, but then she tells me I have two accounts. I said, there's no way I have two accounts. <laughs> mm. One account. Yeah, of course. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Which I've had for forever. Right, right. Anyway. And then they'll blame that. it on COVID, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> for now, it's well, it's because of monkeypox that we we can't give you well, customer no, service. No, no. It, they'll blame it on COVID. But if they actually the call was wasn't going to India, they wouldn't use that excuse. Right. Yes. Boy, this is amazing. One hundred percent. You just you can't. Nothing's pleasant anymore. It's you know. True. I mean, uh, and even when I have a pleasant experience, sometimes they just don't solve it. Like. I had a problem with getting email or my main email address wasn't well, that took you four email days. Email in my client. Mm. And and I couldn't figure out why. And I'm moving stuff around. I mean, nothing's working. So um I call GoDaddy where my email account is, and he says, it's, Well, go here. Are you getting the mail here? I'm sending you mail. I said, Yeah, it's an online thing. It was go to Outlook 365 and wherever. Mm-hmm. And uh and it comes through okay, but I'm not getting on my, I, and it's working on my iPad, working on my iPhone, but it's not working on my computers. Hmm. And, and so he's saying, well, you know, um, uh, you're do, we're, everything's fine on our end and you're having to deal with Microsoft for the actual program because that's who resolves it, okay? And they said, uh, it's nothing here, call, uh, call Apple. Oh, yeah, I want to spend the rest of my life waiting for Apple. <laughs> Another pleasant experience you're going to have, you know. Um, and you spent four days on that. On what? Your mail. On the mail? The mail is two yeah. days. Two days. Two couple days. days. Two, yeah. Couple days. Yeah, except for the short walk we took the other day, which, by the way, I got to tell you something. This is funny. And I, I don't, I don't get it, you know. I, I every, every I do I do this show uh, one day a week. I do four three shows, uh, three nights a week at uh, on late. Maybe if I'm lucky, I get 150 people, maybe 200, watching the nighttime show. This show, yeah, it gets quite a bit more. Okay, somewhere around 400 to 500. Sometimes it's gotten up as high as a thousand. Okay. Wow! All right. Marjorie and I go out for a walk the other day. I decided to, I decided to turn on the uh, the uh, uh, Facebook feed, and we do a kind of live thing from the park. She and I just sitting on a bench, just bitching back and forth as we often do. And then we get up and we take a walk and we show people the turtles in the pond, right? 
this is great programming. Everybody wants to see turtles in a pile, <laughs> right? And uh, then, uh, then we walk a little bit more around. And finally, I say, well, we got to walk up the hill and I'm going to be exhausted. So goodbye. So it's like 10 minutes in the lane. Do you know how many views we've had on that thing so far? Close to 800. Really? Yeah. It's like, it's like the kitties playing the piano crap. I was, you know? I was one of them. I watched it. Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. So I just wonder why the hell I'm doing any of these other shows. I just <laughs> walk in the park for 10 minutes with my wife. We could be arguing with each other or whatever. And uh, I, I see that Andrew Deutsch, Deutsch, Andrew Deutsch, Andrew Deutsch Clay is trying to get in here. Hold on a second. Oh, there's Andrew Deutsch. Wait a minute. Where is he? There he is. Oh, no. I was Andrew. getting off. Sorry, I was just getting off my phone so oh, I could. Oh, oh, OK. All right. Andrew Deutsch Clay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the misogynist. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Mike Chisholm. Okay, well, I have two insights as to what you just, you know what, they're not even insights. Like, let's not go so far as to say that. Uh, the two comments on what you just said. Number one is um, the the views on a live are very different than the views on a, on a show like this. this where This wasn't you, live. This wasn't live. Yes, it was. You did it live. I thought it was Facebook Live. I thought I was. Facebook, Facebook Live, live uh, you where we initially got walking. maybe maybe 36 views or something like that. Uh, okay. And then when it was there to just be watched at any time, it got up to almost, but I put a little bit of it on uh, on uh, YouTube. Put some, I put it on YouTube. I got about 76 there. But on Facebook, I got close to 700. I think it got okay. The second, the second amazing comment. Amount. It's an amazing amount. The second comment, though, is yeah. that you've amassed all these people uh, over this time. You know, you've got a lot of people who, who follow you on the Facebook. And when they see you put up something with Central Park, like for me, I jump into that because Central Park is like a magical, whimsical place for me. Uh, my wife and I, when we go to New York, it's, it, it, that's, oh my God, we fucking love it so much. And I think that a there's a Shecky, home point advantage. Shecky, would you describe uh, Central Park as whimsical? No. <laughs> I would. I well, would. The muggers are kind of whimsical. Steve, is it whimsical? Yes. There, are, there are parts of it. The carousel yeah. and Belvedere oh, okay, Castle. That's whimsical. I, okay. Okay. Continue, Mike. I just, well, is the carousel well. still there? I mean, I'm not even sure. I don't know. Folks, folks who don't live in New York and love New York, my wife and I are very at the tippy top of that list. Uh, and then also, like all the things that we have seen from You've Got Mail to the Fisher King, uh, all the images of Central Park that when you go there, the familiarity of it, and it's probably lost on all the New Yorkers or whatever. So when you put a video up for Central Park, I, I watched it. I'm one of those, I'm one of those 800. And, and, and so I think part of it might have to do with that. I also could, uh, I'm very open to the possibility that I'm full of shit. So yeah. uh, either one thing to pick. You know what's interesting about Central Park is how many avenues wide, Rick? It's, uh, let's see. Uh, it goes from Fifth Avenue to um, Central Park West, which is it's like eight. in the 8th Avenue, 7th yeah. Avenue. No, we live on seven. No, but it's about it's four eight. avenues, isn't it, wide? Yeah, about four avenues across. Yeah, and it's about, and then it goes down 50, 50 blocks downtown. Okay, all right. We're at the top end of it. And one yeah. time I went into the park after one of my shows and I started walking through the park. I thought it'd be nice to take a walk through the park to, to get home. And this was after the radio show at Sirius XM. You remember I was there? Um, <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm walking through the park and all of a sudden I realized I'm lost. <laughs> now, this is only a park that is four avenues wide. You, you can get lost in there. Yeah, oh, but you absolutely. can walk in either direction and get out of it. Yes, I'm right. lost. I don't know where to go. I don't even know. You know, make a right turn and you're on Fifth Avenue. Make a left turn, you're no, on. But if you don't Park. know where is left and which is right, you know, you <laughs> could then walk 50 blocks downtown before you <laughs> found anything. But I actually got lost. So they had, I there was this app I downloaded while I was in the park. <laughs> it was a Central Park app. Mm -hmm. And it would tell me exactly where I was in Central Park. And then it showed me how to get out of it. 
questions. <laughs> I, I went, I, I had to go to a lunch at the boathouse a couple of weeks ago and I got lost trying to find the boathouse in the park. Well, the boathouse is a little bit hard to find. And they're, they're shutting it down now. It's got, it's yeah, are they really? Closing it, in September. It, was oh. it was a restaurant, oh. right? Yes, I mean, the beautiful restaurant because it's right on the pond. It's on the lake, you know. Yeah, it's they tried to get somebody else to take it over. I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I'm, when I was there, it was packed to the gills, and it's not cheap. Oh, because they're announcing they're closing it. No, this was before that. This was before they oh. announced. Oh, really? Oh, I mean, well, that's sad. Yeah, it's very sad. Oh, it's sad. Yeah. Um, and and they got rid of our uh, swimming pool here, didn't they? They get rid of it as a pool. They're building a new one. A new swimming pool. And an ice ring. But no, but it's not, I don't think it's going to be an ice rink anymore. It's not going to be something. in the anymore. winter, Alex. Anyway, I used to go down to the park and I would walk all the way around what we call the Harlem Mirror, which is a lake at the top of, uh, of Central Park. And uh, they started working on it. You can't walk around it now. It's a well, pain they're working in the on it. Yeah, I mean, but they should have left a little bit of it open so you could walk past it and do the complete circuit. So ruined my walk. So now I don't walk anymore. So now I can't walk more than three blocks without saying my legs are hurting or, you know. Plus well, I, don't don't worry. The mayor will take care of it. I, I have this position on the uh, <laughs> uh, 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 vertigo, and uh, this is his new ailment. Well, I can't. <laughs> I, I, can't I, I can't walk without wobbling. You know, but as good as good as the movie was, you should be enjoying it. Yes, yeah, right. vertigo was a hell of a film. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Well, yeah, but the film was not called Positional Vertigo. <laughs> it was originally. No, that was that was that was the dirty version in the back room at the video store. <laughs> Positional Vertigo. <laughs> Did you see? Mar I showed Marjorie Rick the first episode, uh, the second, the first episode of the new season of um, of uh, uh, Harley Quinn. Yeah, I watched that yesterday. And, you told me it was I, there. Um, I. I I thought it was very funny. Marjorie did not like it. Eh. I love the line in there about uh, when one of the characters who thinks he's an actor, they tell him they're not going to hire him. He says, but I need the SAG. <laughs> SAG after money. SAG, yeah. SAG, <laughs> but I need the SAG funny. insurance. <laughs> and, because, you know, and I think it was Clayface who was the one who yeah. said that. And then he says, and that means I won't get the screeners anymore. And I like to use the boxes they come in for stuff. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, how many people are going to get that joke? And also the significance of the joke, because they screwed us on our insurance. Mm. You know, and you just have to make a lot of money in order to get the insurance now. That joke was made for me. 100% that joke was made. Right. Like I'm the target audience of that joke right there. There are a lot of in jokes in the show. Very much, yeah. And it goes yeah. by very fast. You probably have to go watch it a second time to get all the references. I think it's a fun. Did you like it, Shecky? Oh, yeah. No, I liked it. I watched all three episodes yesterday. Yeah. You know? And in the beginning of the of the first one. Well, you I, said it's like I couldn't do that on Midnight Blue. I couldn't do what they were doing with animation on Midnight Blue years ago, which was, by the way, owned by the same people who owned HBO, right? And, um, there's a scene of they're watching an animated movie of them. See, because they're now a couple, all right? Well, they're married. Harley married, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. <laughs> and they're watching a porn film with people playing them. Okay. <laughs> and there are scenes of like the, you know, cartoon <laughs> character with her head between two other, between the legs and going down with her finger and doing things like that. I'm going, what the hell? <laughs> you know, and it's like, I don't know if you've ever seen that that thing somebody turned out where it's supposed to be an ad and in the end, it basically, you know, it's a bunch of people who are doing a show for HBO or what it's, what's it about? And then they, they tell them what it's about and they say, but that's that's dirty. That's like, how do you, how you, are you doing that kind of film? And finally at the end, they go, no, mom, it's not porn, it's HBO. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I could think when I was watching this is it's not porn, it's HBO. <laughs> HBO Max. HBO Max. Yeah. yeah. Why didn't you like it, Marjorie? It just wasn't my thing. 
you know something? She was out to not like it. I she was not. No, you preset yourself up to not. I watched like the it. entire episode, Alex. You what? You watched the entire episode. She like that was some kind of real task that she had to do. It was. You've got. <laughs> tell me what better things you have to do with your life in that half hour. Not too much. Yeah, I I can attest to that. Okay. Yeah. Now, Ben, did you watch Riverdale yet? The final no. episode. No. Interesting ending. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm I'm saving it for tonight. Some of these things I save. Yeah. Um, like I had yeah. a new episode of Orville, and I I I it just held off for about four or five days watching it. Yeah. It just to have a right time that I want to sit there and watch it because it's so good. I don't want to just watch half of it and watch half of it later, you know. And they're long episodes. Uh, and uh, the same thing was true with. Uh, uh, with Harley Quinn. I didn't want to watch all three episodes. I haven't watched the third one yet. Unless I just have time to sit there and savor the damn thing. Well, right? that's the one with the villainy awards. The third episode. Yes, yes. <laughs> the villainy awards? Yes, hosted by the Joker. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. All right. It's a, it's a cartoon. Oh, wait, look. Oh, it's Santa Claus. Albert Claus. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Oh, Albert. My Albert. God. How fast oh. does your beard grow? We haven't talked. <laughs> I, I, I just talked to you just a couple of weeks ago and it was just coming in. You should see the nether regions. <laughs> <laughs> we call that Holland. Okay. <laughs> Dutch. The Dutch are very, very fertile. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, an experiment. Albert. Sorry, Albert has a David that. Letterman retirement beard. Yeah, that's what I that's what I think about it too. You know, I wanted one of those like hipster like beards that come, but it it's growing out like Letterman. Well, actually, what that beard says, I'm giving up. <laughs> well, no, it says I'm not shaving uh, and and trimming. That's all it says. Is I there a reason know. why he's not shaving? Just because you know, I figured I'd let my hair go down, and uh, if I'm doing that, I'm going to do the beard too. It'll be gone soon, though. No, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Do, you, do you like it? I mean, or, it, it, it like, doesn't bother me at all. Because I, I've tried to make dudes to get going on a beard like that to piss off Marjorie. And well, uh, that it's doing that it's doing for me. It's, it, your wife doesn't even want to get near your face, right? Not, uninterested completely. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So this would, if I made it bigger, I wouldn't have you give Marjorie a good night kiss anymore. No, you could stay the way you are and you'd have that. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's the same old Albert. Uh, same <laughs> same yeah. Hello, Seraphin. Your mic is off, but uh, you got to turn your mic. A on. pleasure to be with you, Alex, and everybody else. Hello. Hello, Seraphin. You're where again? I'm in Sunnyvale, California, in the Bay. Sunnyvale, California, and of course, Albert is in. Uh, he's in Florida, which we take. Beautiful downtown America. We <laughs> beautiful downtown America. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, how's everything in the, your neck of the woods? I don't know. I don't watch the news. I don't really hang out with a lot of people, so I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess okay. Yeah, I wish we didn't watch the news, but Marjorie always has MSNBC on, <laughs> and so she can have. But, but again, to why? So I know more about she wants something to yell whatever she constantly yells at it when there's somebody she doesn't like <laughs> shut the fuck up and I'm trying <laughs> to tell her like those ads for you know uh, uh, about uh, trying to uh, uh, make old uh, people not act like their parents that uh, those ads yeah well, you don't yell at the TV set because nobody's <laughs> <hearing> you. <laughs> you know um and I keep trying to tell Marjorie that, but she goes, well, it makes me feel good. Yeah. Well, it didn't make me feel good. That's why I stopped. So. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm dead serious about it. And I feel much better now. Yeah. So um, how, it's, everything's, uh, you, you're just staying indoors a lot? Or are you going out? No, I go out. I go to the gym every day. I, you know. Really? I can't even walk anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm good for about a mile. That's it. Show still the same as about 10 years ago. Oh, shut the hell up. <laughs> nothing's <Yeah. laughs> changed. Albert, nothing has changed. You just walk right into him, Alex. You give I, me the opening. I'm going to take it. 
Mike's got, a, <laughs> by the way, I sent you an email by accident yesterday. Who, me? Just had like the letter three or something. I was testing my equipment and I sent uh, it. The letter, the letter three? I didn't get it. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, Mike. Can we go back to Albert's beer for one second? <laughs> Yes, let's let's go like back you and I have it in common, you know. Another, another, another comment. Before you shave that sucker off, yeah. um, my request is that you find a sketch comedy group of some sort, and you explore the idea of a sketch called "What if Jesus lived to his mid fifties," and uh, and and just go down that role because that's what I see when I see your beard, buddy. Can I say what if Jesus lived till his sixties? Okay, well <laughs> that would be more appropriate. I didn't want to be uh, yeah, here's what you, uh, you, presumptuous, here's but, what but you, anyway, you get the idea. Uh, that is, yes, that is exactly that. what I see right there. Here's Mike, if you get a camera crew and you get you get people to do it, I'll be happy to be the, the, the guy in there. I'd be happy to do it. But, you know, the thing is, when you finally decide to cut it off, I would I would video, uh, sit, you know, do a video of it and then put it on YouTube. And, Why? I can or, do or another give one. it to me to put on YouTube and I'll monetize it. You make a fortune. Albert, so uh, Albert shaves his beard. You know, then, every day. that's nothing special. If I go to the Netherlands and I shave, then yeah. you get you get the feeling Alex's version of what a fortune is and mine are different. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm on that's a fixed he never income. Goes out, okay, I'm on a fixed income. So. All right. <laughs> you know, but no, no, but I mean, we could make some money off of it. Yeah. Well, if you want to be my agent. Go right ahead. Tell me when to do it and, and, and videotape it. And I, I put I'll it give up you on your 10%. Site and I make the money off of it. No, I make the money. You get the percentage. No, I think you have to put it on like TikTok or one of those oh, other TikTok. services. TikTok, yeah. Oh, yeah, TikTok. Put it on, put it on MySpace. So. But you know, I, don't know how to, <laughs> I, I don't know how to put something on TikTok. And I don't know how you make money off of it. I don't have any of it. So anybody Well, you wants call to yourself an influencer. Don't right. get to, whatever you do. Well, go on the CompuServe bulletin board. Explains everything. I don't know if anybody. <laughs> did we lose Steve Bender? I guess we did. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 yeah. he, he said goodbye. Yeah. He texted goodbye. No, oh, okay. get a tutor. Gotta go tutor. Okay. Anyway, uh, let me let me let me. Um, uh, what was I going to ask? Oh, um, oh, I forgot. Beards, TikTok. TikTok. Oh, TikTok. Yeah. Um, uh, how many here have TikTok? I do. How there many is. here are addicted to TikTok? There it is. Your watch. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's more tick than tuck. It's just it's just addictive. You just boom. Oh, look, kitties all sleeping with each other. Boom. Oh, women with big tits. Boom. <laughs> oh, somebody's trying to sell me insurance. Boom. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. And it's addictive. And the Chinese are watching you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the same Facebook and what's it, Reels on uh, Insta on YouTube. There's a bunch of different places to see yeah. that crap. If the, if the Chinese really. are watching me, they're, they're sound asleep then. <laughs> are there other people trying to imitate TikTok? Yeah. yeah, well, Instagram and Facebook both are with their, with their Reels. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and you're trying to do the exact same thing and, and, and include it in their platform wasn't the first one vines or something vines it's yeah, yeah it's all it's all there's a through line from all of those things i think yeah so so but i don't i you know all these other people are trying to get in on the tiktok action and i just don't think they're going to be able to do it you know tiktok is a brand and people go to that for their for their videos and to post their videos the other, the YouTube one, and is is gaining traction because it helps commercially with your SEO to drive traffic to your website, where TikTok isn't tied to tied to the Google algorithms. Oh, okay. So it's well, TikTok so, has a weak point. So what do I, if I want to put something on um, on 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 uh, YouTube? Mm -hmm. They have their own. They do. They do. It's called if you what? next time you go on YouTube, scroll down a little bit and you'll see little videos that, that are unrelated. Yeah. If you watch them, it works exactly the same way TikTok does. Now, is there a and it'll help with shorts, SEO right? to your website? Yeah, little shorts. Yeah. Is there a limit to the amount of time you can put on there? I don't know. I don't know because I don't we're we're starting to produce a bunch of them for the for our company, but um my my digital team's doing it. I'm waiting. Instagram gets a lot of stuff from TikTok. 
It does. It does. You yeah, can cross yeah. post. Yeah, but yeah. you can't. You can't like put up 10, 20 minutes on on TikTok. No, no, no. no. There's no. a limit to how much time, and you have to do it by turning your camera in the portrait mode. Right, which is very unusual. Which I find obnoxious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a widescreen guy all the way. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of people now think that that's the way you shoot with uh, with the iPhone because it's mm -hmm. the easier way because you're always already looking at it that way. But that is an unfortunate. Is that if you turn it sideways, you get the wide screen. You get a, a better, like, uh, well, I don't know what the thing is with Mike, but he's not full screen. He's not full wide screen. <laughs> I'm not right now. No, no. he's in Canada. Canada. You're a letter, but you're in a letter, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's to do with the it's to do with the metric system, Alex. It's too much to explain. Um, <laughs> I'm on my iPhone today. Today, uh, my iPad, and I'm not in the studio, so 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 I've got my iPhone. I'm just literally holding it up, but it does it is sideways. Like I got all you guys. Yeah. In, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, so if you awesome. pay if you pay your bill, you get a full screen. <laughs> oh, uh, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> with with real dollars. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, there's our there, there we are. Seraphin has our Gabnet website up. Yeah, but it's on a folding phone. You think you have uh, problems with screen orientation? Oh, that, one of these folding oh, phones. oh, he has one of those folding phones. Wow, How cool. Let me see. Get online, Alex. Get online and wait for it. Look at the folding <laughs> phone. I, I, I have a Samsung. It's really great. I, I'm a network guy in terms of network engineering, so it has a lot of tools in terms of Android I can use as part of my job, but the display is, is second to none. And this is the one you can also use digital ink on. So it gives me everything I, I need, and except for the, some of the workmanship or the protect the screen and stuff are kind of peeling up. It's a workhorse. I dropped it so many times, and it's, it does great. So Samsung Galaxy Fold, good product. Have you gone swimming with it? <laughs> how much how much did you just get paid for doing that ad <laughs> no but you know it's it's come close to swimming uh you know i should talk to to uh mr Sheckman about cruising with one of these phones that almost become it almost looks like it becomes the size of like a mini ipad or whatever sarah yeah, about, about half the string of, uh, of an eight inch note pen or something like that yeah oh right okay well you look at an ipad and they're only well mine's i think 11 and a half or 11 but as, that, as I was saying, screen orientation, portrait, you know, landscape, it, it really boggles the mind what this what these folding things can do as to which way you've better seen. But yeah. it does have that screen rotation capability. Wow. Okay. See, see, he has it. So Scott, you're out there in Plano. You're going over to see uh, 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 Jack Bishop in the hospital. No, I just got back to town yesterday. So. I'm hoping he'll be on tonight, you think? No, he's not going to be on tonight. I was thinking maybe doing his show tonight. But doing what? He, he won't be on for about another at least week and a half. Oh, wow. Because he's having surgery. He's having surgery on Wednesday on his spine. Oh. They're going to give him one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, he uh, he has to have some I don't know, junk removed from his spine. Oh. Or a spine removed from his junk? <laughs> <laughs> oh oh wow but anyway it's it's it, i'm sure not going to be pleasant and i, I tried to it, look him up on facebook and he didn't post anything so i don't exactly know what hospital he's in so uh he yeah here's what he is he's in a hospital in uh denton texas or someplace like that is that near you guys no, i mean that's uh, that's near yeah yeah i think it's denton but i don't know it could be. I don't know if the last place I want to get my spine worked on is Denton, Texas. I think so. I think that's <laughs> a correct. This you is. know, I mean, um, I, I, I'm very fortunate here in New York that we have world class hospitals. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they give you that, COVID. Albert? They give you COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Albert, you'd agree with that, wouldn't you? I don't, I don't know. I've really never been. Well, I mean, I you've got assume. Mount Sinai, you've got uh, Sloan Kettering. You'll be a Presbyterian, whatever. Yeah, you've got. You can't possibly have better hospitals than we do down here. We got all the old New Yorkers down here who have more <laughs> ailments and more problems, and that's <laughs> why they go to Florida to die. Well, whatever it takes, but they get in good care <clears throat> because uh, this is where the insurance companies want to take care of the people. Do you have in your hospital signs that say? waiting time three minutes no we do we have uh, billboards on the highway yes yeah. whatever the hospital's what? name is and then waiting time three minutes 
So if really? you're can I, can oh, I yeah. tell you my hospital story, Alex? No. So two two weeks ago, I tested positive for, for COVID at home and wanted to get the antibodies. Mm -hmm. So I called the ER. It was, Sunday, it was a Sunday morning. I called and they said, well, we have this virtual uh, urgent care that, that could get you the answer you want. So virtual I go online. instant care? Oh. Vir virtual uh, urgent care. So I signed up for the thing. And, and the hospital systems here in Cleveland are amazing. But yeah. This, so I call the virtual. I get this disheveled looking uh, uh -huh. female, I think, doctor in a smock in her country living room and a, and a Barco lounger. Yeah. And I said to her, I said, I, I tested, I tested positive and I want to know if I go to the ER, if I can get the monoclonal antibodies. And her response was, I, I really don't know. I don't know how to treat COVID. I said, I paid, I paid money for a virtual visit with urgent care. You got it. And she said, well, I don't, uh, I don't specialize in infectious diseases. So I recommend you go to the ER. So wow. I have to pay, I have to pay for the car. I went to the ER and was treated like a king. I mean, it was, but they ended up giving me those pills. Yeah, they're great. Uh, and, and until the aftertaste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did they, you have those? Yeah, they have little, yeah, we took fine. the pills, but, but the, the side effects were horrible. Uh, they were, just the, the, the aftertaste. I, I've never actually done it. So I'm, I'm kind of making yeah. supposition of the flavor, but it's something like, emptying septic tank with a rusty metal straw yeah well it's, oh. it's not <laughs> I, i'm assuming that's what it would taste like i've never actually yeah, done it. it it's not exactly an aftertaste what it is is the pill somehow affects you in a certain way that creates a kind of metallic taste i think is what you're referring to we both had that marjorie said yeah. it was her effects were horrible i found it didn't affect me very badly you know yeah. both of but, you guys had COVID. yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Should be you should watching the news, Albert. It was all over the place. Oh, Fox what. News covered it. OAN. It was everywhere. They had your own bit ready to go, Alex. Hannity claimed it was a scandal and, and it was a fake news. So we called up our doctor, and our doctor said, "Okay, we'll give you the monoclonal. Uh, the, it's called. Uh, it's another Jerry Not Lewis loaded. drug. Paxlovid. Uh, <laughs> it's called Paxlovid, and." Uh, it kills the virus in in one day. That's how fast it kills it. You know. Yes. Uh, the side effects last for months. I don't think that that's the pill. I think that was the you just COVID treated you. I think it's the side effect of being married to Alex. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm light in the head all the time. Well, I always was, Mike. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a question for Andrew actually. Like, do you think that doctor was like? Like, because I have, I know a doctor up here in Canada that has done this. Uh, were they like speaking to you in code? Like, I'm not allowed to say that I know how to treat COVID because of whatever, 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 but go to your ER. Like, were they basically telling you if you want the antibodies, go to the ER and they're kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge? No. Or there was, it was total inadequacy? Total inadequacy. Because what's crazy is that I was at an event that was raising money for that particular hospital. And the head doctor who runs <clears throat> the ER started a conversation with me and said, hey, have you ever, have you ever been to, to this particular ER? And I said, I was your guest last week. <laughs> and I told her the story and she was like, can I please have your name, your birth date and your permission to look up your records? Because this, this is not good. <laughs> Yeah, and then well, she, called me, yeah. she called me uh, the other day and said, that doctor is no longer in... Uh, in wow. By the way, they, oh. they, they have a recording. They watched it. Albert so. had uh, had COVID in his family or in his household. My household. Your household. Right. Uh, way back when it wasn't fashionable to have COVID. One of the first <laughs> COVID people. Very excited. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you didn't have any vaccinations or anything uh -huh. like that, you know. So, was it Linda? Good fun. It was somebody in the household. I why refused you, why to. Why don't you want to say yeah. who it is? Because medical records are protected by law. It's HIPAA. <laughs> HIPAA. Have to give out that information. <laughs> it's a HIPAA thing, huh? Yes, that's right. Hey, by the way, um, you know, I'm, I'm I just jumped on to use you guys. Uh, I uh, have been watching the Netflix show. I don't mean to sidetrack you for a second. I just need to, to put my feelers on the Netflix show, how to change your mind. So if anybody can get a hold of any uh, mescaline, yeah. any uh, ecstasy, any uh, acid, or what's the other one? Ketamine? No, not ketamine. Oh, oh, MDMA. 
Uh, that's 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 the ecstasy. Uh, that's the ecstasy. Uh, it was MDMA, LSD. mescaline, psilocybin, LSD. LSD. psilocybin, psilocybin, and LSD. Any of the big four, let me know. That's all. Thanks. <laughs> that show's amazing, wasn't it? <laughs> that's well, great. I'll tell you, my my wife, who's Ronnie, who's now my ex-wife. Well, actually, she was my ex-wife before. Now she's my ex-ex-wife because she's dead. <laughs> well, that was, uh, what are you laughing at? That's true. The truth. Yeah. That means former ex-wife. No, no, she's still your ex-wife. I she's like, like ex I just like your ex former ex-wife. Ex but anyway, she took psilocybin to kind of get her to cope with death. Yeah. It's become yeah. very good for people that yeah. way. That, that sounds like a minute, minute. Life. I think I think Andrew has COVID. Hold on a second. Andrew, what was that you did earlier? There we go. Is it back? <laughs> that, drug, that drug name sounds like another Jerry Lewis drug name. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. There's more. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, Sarah. Uh, yeah, Alex. Um, I heard uh, following up on Albert's uh, uh, you know request. I heard a conversation about uh, the Netflix uh, you know drugs uh, program mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that that's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to, to throw out a really strong recommendation. Vice, the channel Vice, has this program called Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia. They've done two seasons of this. And he goes through ketamine. He goes through MDMA. He's, uh, he actually goes uh, into the jungles and stuff like that and researches all sorts of different things, quaaludes and stuff like that. And it's very entertaining, but it's very informational. This guy's, I guess, a chemist by background who deals with pharmaceuticals. That's on so Vice. If you guys want to... Want to catch some in, very entertaining, you know, with travel and is everything. Is that another channel that drugs. costs us money? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Unless you unless you don't have Vice as a network, I know that I get Vice through Hulu because I'm a Hulu subscriber for live oh, so TV, it's on, and it's on I get Hulu Vice. And, and this is a program on Vice, which is Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia. Oh, oh, so and it's on Hulu. You get it. It's on. Yeah, you can get Vice through Hulu as a regular channel. Yeah, I love Vice. Vice is awesome. Yeah, I love mm. Hulu. You know. I think Hulu, I watch more stuff now on Hulu than I ever do on Netflix. Uh, Marjorie watches Netflix a lot and there's nothing there. I mean, I can tell you she's watching pure crap. Right, Marjorie? Uh, I agree with Marjorie. <laughs> well, it's just everything's the same British show, you know? And Not the Korean Net shows. And it's a Netflix original. Well, Amazon and Freebie have all of the episodes of the Waltons. <laughs> wow. rewatch rewatch that that'll be wow. good for you wow forget okay. about vice we gotta watch the waltons there you go see <laughs> Zeb zebulon walton and his family what more could you want alex yeah have you seen triple r no oh you gotta see the movie triple r on netflix it's you phenomenal to watch on tcm they have it up right now is tarzan the ape man with johnny weissmuller oh, and and mia farrow's mother uh and i i watched it and i went you know this picture is so i guess it was 30s late 30s yeah. no so 32 32 uh, it was so uh, 30s it is kind of like this woman meets this ape man and he rapes her and he she falls in love with him Am I, is that the best way to describe it yeah and then you get the sequel where she does the nude swim oh the nude swim yeah yeah That's awesome yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, but I mean, I thought about all the stuff that was in this film. They wouldn't dare put it in a film today. <laughs> they wouldn't dare. How you doing out there, Paula? I got to well, drag you kicking and screaming into this. <laughs> so, so do you miss this male uh, fantasy uh, kind of movie? I mean, you know, like you said, the nostalgic. What do you think? Well, I don't know. You know, I mean, what was what film was I watching? And I just said there's just so much rape going on here, you know. And it was just considered uh, uh, normal. Normal. Was it a Weinstein movie? Huh? Was it a Weinstein movie? No, it wasn't it was a Weinstein movie. It was a Weinstein movie. It was a Hitchcock movie. It was a Hitchcock movie, Alex. What? I thought the movie that you were talking about last week, where you said that it was a Hitchcock movie, was it not? No, the Fountainhead was King Vader. The Fountainhead. The Fountainhead. There you go. Head. Right. Yeah. There you he go. rapes her. He rapes her in the film. Go. And yeah. everybody goes, hey, hey, he raped her. High five. Yeah. yeah. You know, That's I, the ideal man. What did you say, yeah. Paul? That's yeah, I did. I did. Uh, um, I, 
thought about that. Um, the, the the genre that has the the uh, the, the, uh, the romance novels. Yeah. They were called bodice rippers. Yes, absolutely, Daniel Steele. And that appealed to <laughs> women. I mean, that was that was that was geared to. I mean, the the, 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 the <laughs> art appealed to women. <clears throat> and I thought that was kind of interesting. Does that mean that that you know we all bought into that or what? What? Well, Danielle Steele threatened to sue me in San Francisco because she lived in oh. San Francisco, and. Uh, I, what happened was I was with this this reading group that was started by Penn and Teller, <laughs> and and the book they had us read was this book by Daniel Steele. And I get I get twelve pages into it, and a fourteen year old girl gets raped by the stable boy. Okay, and wow. uh, uh, and, and let's say it's not rape. Let's say. She, it's somewhat semi-consensual. Who cares? She's 14. I said, this is kitty porn. And I said, she's writing kitty porn and getting away with it. So she filed suit against me. <laughs> and I had to, I had to come up with some kind of way to mollify her. But I mean, geez, I mean, I, I said to myself, anybody who would, tr if it was anybody but Daniel Steele, they'd say this is kitty porn. Mm -hmm. What about, what about <laughs> Pepe Le Pew and... Uh, yeah. Pepe Le Pew and uh, Popeye with uh, Brutus trying to rape olive oil every episode. Right. How, how about <laughs> Vernon Nunn and then Mike? Yes, Vernon. In Kentucky, it's not illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeehaw. Uh, uh, and Mike Chisholm. I'm from Canada, and that's not surprising, Vernon. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> uh, uh, no, I. I, this is a this is a commercial for one of the episodes of Life in the Passing Lane. I'm sorry, I have to say it. That's Your Danielle fine. Steele story. That yeah. Danielle Steele story. Okay, so I have this. I have this. Well, uh, how we read phrase. it? We read a passage from her book, and then somebody portrayed well, it. Okay, yeah. Her home. But I want to bring it back to you. I want to bring it back to you for a second here, because this is. I have a turn of phrase when I describe you, Alex, and it's that um, Howard Stern wrote on the highway that Alex Bennett paved. That's the turn of phrase that I use. This is this story, the Danielle Steele example, is a prime example of it. And if you look at that episode of Life in the Passing Lane that tells that Danielle Steele story where you basically sick your 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 fans on her a little bit unknowingly. Yeah. Um, and then and then it turned into a thing that Howard Stern then made famous, the security guard, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I love that story i've gone back and listened to that episode a few times so i highly recommend everybody who hears this go to life in the passing lane and listen to the danielle Steele story i don't know which uh, episode it's alex bennett it's so what, good do you know what episode it is i forget i know it was it all was i know is i did 60 episodes of that i did 60 episodes of that more than that uh i think it's 70 something and it's oh, over halfway oh. through but when you get to that no i think but it's, it's oh, it, it, oh you're right i hit 70 i hit 70 yeah you're right yeah. i'm sorry folks more than that so i don't know where it fits in there you know it's, know it's halfway it through but anyway if you find the danielle seal story i'll try and find it today and i'll throw it up somewhere sure. it well, is so good. Good. listen to all 70 episodes of my life which i did i did did you really Oh. I've 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 listened to the entire series twice, Alex. I mean, I've got a lot of good compliments it on it, but what? What did you say, Marjorie? I only listened to it once. Yeah, and live the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's yeah. really really good. Yeah. Um, how's everything in Cleveland, Paula? I'm in I'm in Akron, Ohio. Akron, Akron. <laughs> Um, but I'm really glad to hear that that uh, that that thing with the uh, that uh, the health issue got um, addressed for you because Cleveland Clinic has this great reputation. It, it wasn't and, the clinic; it was the other one. It was the other one. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I don't want to badmouth them because they treated me so well at the ER. But it wasn't the Cleveland Clinic. Yeah. Okay. But you know, like it's it's uh like it's kind of reassuring. You got that, the equivalent medically, I would say, Paula. He got the equivalent medically with what Marjorie's just had to put up with with Amazon. You know, <laughs> this total incompetence. All right. That's pretty scary. Yeah. Well, especially where health is concerned. They, I was saying they didn't they didn't ask me to reboot the COVID test, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, did you have COVID? I did, yeah. You did. See, I mean, like I went to uh, you know, I had prostate cancer. 
and they sent me to this doctor and he gave me radiation and then he put seeds in my prostate and he was the same guy that did it for rudy giuliani 20 years ago so i figure if giuliani's still alive without somebody trying to kill him um uh you know he's got to be pretty good and he's world class i couldn't find that in denton texas you know i'd find somebody would tell me ah we'll just remove the prostate to hell with you you know so i mean yeah, i'm lucky to live in new york I'm lucky, and I feel good for Marjorie because I know she's in good hands with a lot of her doctors, you know. But the last story with Marjorie. Uh oh. <laughs> no, our doctor told her to go see a pulmonologist because she'd been, you know, getting out of breath, short of breath. And she calls what, uh, about three doctors on a list that he gave you? A, a doctor rep gave me a list of four doctors, all with Mount Sinai. Yeah. So she calls the first one. They don't have an appointment till the end of September. So I got one for the 22nd of September, the week before. Yeah, which is early. How many months is that away? Two uh, months. Yeah, and, the, and the office is a the office is a five floor walk up, probably. <laughs> yeah. But what, what happened was is when she called these people, they were all pulmonologists. They said, well, you know, we, we, we're, we're, we're jammed up because of COVID. Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people coming to see the pulmonologist now because they have residual effects from COVID. You know, well, listen, I just looked at the clock, the old clock on the wall. <laughs> Who used to say that, Rick? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember when I was growing up listening to radio, there was, well, looking at the old clock on the wall, it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. I appreciate your indulgence here. And I love the fact that you call every week. You're a good friend in that way and a lot of other ways. And I, I relish it. Okay. Yeah, whatever. That nice <laughs> <laughs> and if I live till tomorrow, that don't go. Scott Bodiker, <laughs> thank you so much for being on this program today. Love seeing you. And uh, Paula Levin, uh, she's out there in Akron and is a friend of the families, and we love the hell out of her. Charlie Wallace, thank you for being here. He's down there in Texas again. And, of course, we got Marjorie Miller. Uh, she, uh, she, uh, she's married to some asshole. Uh, Len LaFritz. Former radio star. Former radio <laughs> star. He, he, I used to be a big shot. Uh, <laughs> what film was that? Uh, it's one of the Humphrey Bogart movies. The Roaring Twenties. Roaring Twenties, yeah. And she looks up at the cop and he says, what did he do? <laughs> And she says, he and used Jim to be a big Cagney shot. was just shot by, you know, yeah. whoever. Yeah. And he used to be a big shot. Those were the days when they shot you in movies and there was never any blood anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Len LaFrisco, thank you so much. Always a pleasure having you here from California. Vernon Nunn down there in flooded Kentucky. Yeah. But he's away from the flood. Well, mostly, it's mostly in Appalachia. Mostly, mostly in Appalachia. Oh, well, then, then that's, that's, uh, yeah. that's welcome. Uh, all east of us. <laughs> well, there go the Trump votes. Uh, <laughs> Mike Chisholm, thank you so much from up, up Always. in Canada. Andrew Deutsch in Cleveland. Uh, Seraphin out there in California. Sunnyvale, is it? Sunnyvale, yes. Sunnyvale. And finally, uh, Albert Reynoso, better known Nazareth. As uh, 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 oh, okay. <laughs> Albert, <laughs> Albert, of, Albert of Nazareth. There I like that idea about the Jesus number. <laughs> and, and finally, to sign us off, we go to our voice of the sign off, Edward Berger, who says, That's all, folks. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, See you next week. Bye. Bye, Thank Bye, -bye. You. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let me. <laughs>